Two of the best in Division II high school football got together tonight with unbeaten Bells Falls on the road at Buckhard Field in Burlington. A Terrier's win would keep them perfect on the year and just about secure at least second place in the division. Or a Seahorse win and they could jump right past the dogs. This game was so big, Mother Nature came out for this one, also bringing out the umbrellas as well. We picked things up in the first quarter. Peter Labracchio looks to throw, only it lands in the hands of the wrong jersey. That's Chris McKean, and he's headed the other way, doing his best Usain Bolt impression, almost getting in, but he would eventually be taken out just before the end zone. A couple plays later, his teammate, Jihad Bullard, takes it the rest of the way. Even when it looks like he's stopped, he isn't. Bounces outside, 7 nothing. Bellas Falls. They stop Burlington on the very next drive, and that allows McKean to get going again. This time, he would not be stopped at all. Going all the way into the end zone makes it a 15 nothing lead for the Terriers. The rain would finally let up. Pillows Falls did not. Jacob Lauber pounds it through the gut. They go up 22 nothing. Burlington makes it interesting, but Pillows Falls holds on. 32 14 stays unbeaten. The Milton Yellow Jack Pep Band was out in the, at home tonight, taking on Fairhaven. In the second quarter, Milton already had a 22-6 lead, and they got the ball right back thanks to some defensive help. Falling down on the Slater's fumble. The ensuing drive ends with a boot from Anthony Hatfield. The field goal is good, extends the Jackets' lead to 25-6. That would be your halftime score. Second half, Fairhaven comes out running. Alexander with the QB keeper running right up the middle. Slater's getting the double digits on the scoreboard, but wouldn't get a bigger number than Milton already had. They hold on to win 38 to 20. Our next stop had us at Essex. The Hornets hosting Brattleboro pick things up in the third quarter. Brattleboro leading, trailing seven to six. Instead, the Hornets five. The handoff is mishandled. The Colonels fumble, and Essex recovers. They would take advantage. Eli DeGrande rolling left and would find an open Otis Crock for the catch and for the score. And that would put the Hornets up 14 to six. Fourth quarter now. Hornets driving again. This time DeGrande. Calls his own number. QB sweep to the left. Hornets build the lead. They score twice late. It went 34 to 6. It was senior night for the Colchester Lakers at home under the lights with, yes, a lot of seniors. They are facing off of South Burlington. First play from scrimmage, hand off to Kyle Walker, who does anything but. Instead, he's sprinting my way near sideline around a 60 yard return. Quickly, it's 7 to nothing, Colchester. They would come knocking on the door in their next drive down, but after a few Rebel goal line stops, the Lake Show gets in. This time, thanks to Matt Hesford. 14 0 Colchester, just the beginning of a big offensive night for the Lakers. A game that everyone could love the cross lake battle between Woodstock and Plattsburgh. Pick things up first quarter. Daniel Robinson, he's going to get around the first side, making the first points of the game on a 24 yard touchdown. Woodstock leads on the two point conversion, 8 0. Second quarter, Robinson. Jumping back into the highlights by jumping the route. He alone led the Hornets after this pick, going Woodstock all the way down 68 yards. Six point play eventually makes it 16 0 lead. That would not stop PHS from throwing the pigskin. Mitchell Senecal airs it out to Jason Moore. 63 yard touchdown catch. Plattsburgh is on the board 16 6. The Wasps would get right back on the board. Bill Wood. Going far side, he would cut back towards our camera, scoring a 20 yard play. That would be all they need tonight as they hold the one to win. 38 to 30.